Welcome to Everyday Linux User. For the past month, I have been using Linux Mint non-stop across all of my devices. All of my devices set one, and we'll come to that later on. I think if you ask most Linux users to recommend a Linux distribution to a new user or an inexperienced computer user, then Linux Mint would be the one they suggest. It is easy to install, or as easy as an installing an operating system can be, and the user interface is crisp, clean and tidy, and most computer users will be able to navigate the system with ease. Hardware works without requiring any persuasion, and you can see setting up Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and printing was a doddle. Linux Mint comes with a good set of applications by default and has everything you need to get up and running. The software manager used for installing other applications you might need is very easy to use and it's very easy to search for the thing that you want to install. If I had one criticism, it is that a lot of the flat packs are hidden behind a setting in the preference screen, which may not be obvious to new users. The welcome screen takes you through most of the things you might want to do when installing a new operating system, such as installing updates, setting up backups and setting up your firewall. For all the other things you might need, then you can follow one of the many video guides I've created this month, including a complete setup guide, a Cinnamon desktop customization guide, and how to install common fonts. So I have been using it for a month, and well, to be honest, I've been using Linux Mint for many years anyway, so it was never really going to be a troublesome month, and as always, it's been actually quite delightful. There is a graphical tool for nearly everything you want to do to maintain your system. If you are one of those people who haven't made the leap to Linux because you are worried you will spend most of your life typing commands given to you from a sweaty kid in a Reddit forum, then fear not, because I think with Linux Mint you can easily get by without the terminal. In fact, if it hadn't been for the video I created about using the command line tool FFmpeg, then I don't think I would have touched the terminal at all during the whole month. Now earlier on I mentioned that I have installed Linux Mint on all my devices, except for one. So what does that mean? Well, I installed Linux Mint on an old laptop with the XFCE desktop environment, and I installed it on a mini computer with the Linux Mint Debian edition. And obviously I have installed Linux Mint on this computer. The one thing I'm sad about is that there isn't an official Raspberry Pi version of Linux Mint. Of course, you can install Debian and add the Cinnamon desktop, and that will get you somewhere close, but it isn't Linux Mint. So let's talk about the issues I faced during the month. OK, done. So let's move on. Actually, there was one thing I came up against, and that was with GNOME Boxes. I used GNOME Boxes to run Debian for the PokerStars video, and whilst it worked in the end, the first time I installed Boxes, it seemed to forget that KVM was available. So to get around this, I uninstalled and reinstalled, and the problem hasn't reoccurred since. There was one other small thing as well. In my customization guide, I added a radio player as an applet, and on one occasion whilst adding a radio station in, it forced me to quit and try again. Neither of these issues were showstoppers, and I recovered almost immediately. So there you have it, that's Linux Mint. And I'm sad to say that this month has come to an end, but it's now time to kick it up a notch and move on to the next month on. What will it be? Well, you will need to subscribe to find out. Thank you for watching, Everyday Linux User.